Welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. We are bowling things off with cricket. Australia continued their winning streak over the West Indies across formats, taking the first T20 international in Hobart by 11 runs, and uh, that giving them a 1 0 lead in the three match series. Of course, um, this match was shown live on, on Sportsmax, started at about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock Eastern Caribbean time this morning. Well, the other way around. But um, a competitive showing, Ricardo, by this West Indies team, and they could have won. Of course they could have won, Lance, which is exactly what you expect from a team that has the quality to go on and win the T20 World Cup this year. Mm -hmm. I expected nothing less from the Caribbean side that it would be competitive against any team in T20 cricket. I think this is um, the best West Indies T20 side that is out there at the moment. You could have an argument or two about a change or two, um, but... Overall, the squad is as close as you are going to get to a full-strength West Indies side. Um, and I have said that I think this side has the quality to go all the way at the World Cup. Now, I also made the point yesterday regarding the size of the fields in Australia. Yeah. And I was in, I mean, I was really interested to see how the bigger grounds um, would impact on the West Indies batting performance, especially. And if you look at a number of the batsmen, at least three of them, I think, getting out caught on the boundary edge. And I'm thinking anywhere in the Caribbean and and those are going for six and you have a completely different contest. Um, I think the adjustments will be made because I think this team has that type of quality. Um, but I'm not too bothered by what happens on this Australia tour in this three-match T20 yeah. international series. Because for me, regardless of what happens, this team will still have the quality to do extremely well at the World Cup later yeah, on can't, this year. I can't say I disagree with you on that. Here's Donald Oliver, though, with the story of that contest. David Warner. In his 100th T20 International alongside Josh Inglis, who was opening for the first time in T20s, they both the the windows to the snow. Well Captain Rothman Powell used four bowlers in the power play as the Aussies raced to 77 without really loss. Well. A tough chance in the seventh oh. over to get Warner. Nicholas Puran unable to come Puran. up with the catch. Warner brought up his 50 off just 22 balls. Done it with absolute class, David Warner. Match 100, 50, number 25, off just 22 deliveries. Bowl of it. Then yet the... another chance. This one for Inglis. Hold it Brandon back. King Set with a great the effort. Diving effort. That didn't cost the wind as much, though. Slower again. Inglis was out in the same over. Gone for Slow ball works. Hold it against the wing of Inglis. The Aussies lose there. their first. West Indies sought to tighten the screws as Alzari Joseph held with two big wickets in the 13th over. First, Mitch Marsh, and then Warner for a top score of 70. So a bit of glove on that. There is Warner departs. Joseph gets a second one, throws his head back. Joseph ended with two for 46. From 138 for three, the Aussies produced 75 of the last seven overs to reach. A record equal in 213 for eight at the Bellevue Oval. Tim, putting Tim David display. finishing well with a 17 ball 37. Six. Andre Russell taking three of the last four wickets to be the pick of the Windies bowlers with three for 42. Massive chase for the West Indies as Brandon King and Johnson Charles went right to work. The two had an opening stand oh, gee, of 89. Charles raced to 42 oh, of just 25 just balls before Stoinis had him caught in the deep. Oh, opens up the stumps, smashes it, out! Good catch, David Warner. King, well, oh, he got to his wild delivery. He gets bat on it, does King. It will be his 50. But the right-hander fell shortly after. He tugs that away. Good catch, Abbott. Great hands. West Indies, nice 100 for two and very much in the chase. But wickets kept falling at Should regular in intervals. Innings, short, Rodman Powell for 14, Shea Hope, Hope 16. Goes again. This time it will not clear the field. Catch take. And Andre Big Russell, man out of Jamaica. one. Lines up, bowls him, that was so good. The big hitters were going one by one, Brand which meant the, the Caribbean team would get little momentum. 
And although Freaking Jason Warder finished well with 34 from Hold 15, him needed to hit the first to six and did. The visitors fell 11 runs short, finishing at 202 for eight, as Australia went one up in the three-match series. And how pleased are you with that win? The West Indies gave you a scare. Yeah, they I mean, respe we were, respect them a lot. They're a great T20 team. Where do you think it went wrong for you? Um, I think just in the middle where we didn't, we, we struggled to get partnerships. You know, majority of our power batters didn't get off. But having said that, I think it was a good game of cricket. Game two will be played in Adelaide on Sunday morning, Caribbean time, starting three o'clock to make time for ECT. Yeah, so the Oz is taking a one the lead in the series. You can catch every ball of the series live on Sportsmax. And following the match, our cricket commentator and analyst Nikhil Uttam Chandani posted the following on X, formerly known as Twitter. He said, West Indies will take a lot of positives from the first T20 international, restricting Australia to 213 after they were 110 for one in 10 overs. Also the 89 run opening stand and they only lost by 11 runs in the end. There are a few moments in the game where they could have been smarter and uh, this game would have been won. Nickel joins us now on Zoom. Nickel, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. Always great to have you on. Well, let me start by the areas that you suggested that you th thought they could have been smarter, specifically. Yeah, Lance. Yeah, great to be back. Um, I think what a game to this morning. It was worth waking up that early to watch. Um, what I'll say in terms of those areas to be smart, I think it, as Ricardo said, it is a great uh, test for that World Cup because for me, I think that World Cup is going to come down to moments. When the West Indies plays against teams like Afghanistan, New Zealand and their group and even goes further, T20 cricket is going to come down to those fine and small margins, but those moments particularly. I, I thought a few times I heard Ricardo mention the big boundary size. I thought Nicholas Puran, I expect more of him because he will be living with the way he got out. It was to the much bigger side of the ground and heading into the breeze. And in Adam Zampa's last over, I thought that was the big threat. And the game deciding over, and he got two wickets, and then the West Indies really struggled where they lost five wickets in just 20 deliveries. But had Puran sort of seen that out, I think we all saw the amount of depth and also the power that the West Indies have. I think they could have got over the line with his presence. So I was kind of disappointed that he decided to take on Zampa and sort of fell in the trap of trying to take on the big boundary and hit into the wind. It was caught on the boundary. And then a few others as well were also caught trying to take on that bigger side of the ground. So I think that's one area they look to. And then I think some of the bowling choices by Robin Powell. And look, hindsight is 2020. I completely understand why Robin Powell gave Akil Hossein two in the power play. He always does it. But I felt it was kind of a risk because you've got a left-handed David Warner there, who obviously, with the ball spinning in, will be very favored. The first over was good from Hossein. The second one went for 17. And it's always hard to bowl back to that overs in T20 cricket and then in the power play. So I thought there were a few times where the West Indies will probably look back on and say, we could have done things differently and it, the result could have been different. But all in all, a lot mm. of positive to take. Yeah, what's your take on how well both teams started their innings? The Aussies were blazing at the top of their innings, as did the West Indies when they started the run chase. Yeah, Australia is that type of, sort of, that type of country, really. On those decks with that hard new ball, it is so good for batting that the ball will come on even better. So you see... Even when guys are taking pace off the ball, it's not really gripping. There's no real change uh, off this pitch. Whereas you compare that to the Caribbean, where the ball can grip prodigiously, um, it's quite a different challenge. So I think that's why it really suited someone like a Johnson Charles, who hits through the line of the ball really consistently, targets the leg side. And I think that's why he got away. And that's why he said the 89-run opening stand, just the fearlessness, the ruthlessness with which the West Indies took on that chase. And I think it shows how much they believe in the depth that they have. It was funny because I heard... Some of the commentators were questioning when Shepard and Holder were batting there. They needed 54 from 20, and they were quite content to just get a few singles as they began that partnership. And they sort of questioned the intent, but I think I knew that they wanted to take it to the last over. And in the end, 11 runs is, is two sixes. So it shows that they believe, even with Aki Hossein coming in at 10, Alzari Joseph at times coming in at 11, they believe that they can gun down anything. Probably would have liked to chase 190, but it just shows to me the way that they're going about things, how much they believe in that depth that they possess. Yeah, and I'm very happy that you spoke about the depth, Nikhil. By the way, I was hoping that you would come with another line of reasoning today so I could disagree with you, but not a lot that I can disagree with at this point. Um, but the depth that you spoke about, do you suspect that's part of the reason why even someone like a Nicholas Puran 
would feel as if he can take on the best Australian bowler, even against the large side of the ground, because there's a thinking that even if I get out, there is enough quality behind me that can push to get this total. Yeah, I think it's two reasons, Ricardo. One is that uh, I think they're not afraid to sort of anchor the innings or no one feels like they need to sort of stick in because of how much batting they have. You saw Shea Hope at five today and he got 16 from eight. But I also say credit to Australia as well because Puran was 18 from 16 deliveries before he got out. So they actually bowled well to conserve him and sort of frustrate him of, of finding the boundary. We all see Nicholas Puran how much he likes to find the boundary early in his, in his innings to get him going. So I thought they bowled really well to him just to continue to feed in the singles, get him off strike, and it frustrated him. The only reason why I would sort of think Puran would be disappointed with that is because it was Zampa's last over, and we've all seen how much of a threat he has been with that Australian bowling line. He's been their best T20 bowler now for the last three years. So just because it was his last over on that pitch, I would have rather probably see him out. And again, hindsight is twenty twenty. But I think in hindsight, they will look back and say, if we had just seen out that over, maybe got seven or eight from it, we would have then had five overs of strictly seam, which we believe Puran, Russell, and the rest could have really taken down. We would have won the game. So that's why I think he'll be disappointed taking on the big boundary against their best bowler. Yeah, a small concern for me, and it has to do with the bowling, especially in the power play in the first 10 overs, against England um, late last year. We saw some issues with that. Um, we were able to pull things back in the first T20 International, but we saw after that where the England batsmen really got going, especially in those first 10 overs. And, and I wonder if they're... Well, I wonder what the solution is because I am concerned that it is becoming a little bit too consistent now where the first 10 overs are going for too much. Yeah, I think the Paul play, Ricardo, uh, and Rob Powell has really liked to use this trend where he goes to bat to bat overs. So you saw Aki Hossein bowl too. Um, at times, he's gone Jason Holder too in the power play. We didn't see Romario Shepard feature in the first six. But if you look, and when I analyze some of the other teams around the world, very rarely are you seeing guys bowl bat to bat overs in the power play, simply because... Listen, in T20 cricket, the, the quality of the batters now, they line you up. So if you've got a guy bowling six balls at you from one end, and then you go back to that end and he bowls again at you, they sort of can suss out the length he's bowling, the pace, how is it coming onto the bat. And you saw it today with Hossein. So I wonder if that's something, and he likes doing it, but I wonder if that's something that he can sort of think about refining. We didn't see Shepard bowl the new ball. Maybe give him an over. But I like when you mentioned at the beginning of the show that the result is less important. Will we see Ross and Chase feature at, one, at least once in this series. We didn't see him in the England series. And I think maybe it's worth having an option of the ball spinning the other way. That's all I'm saying, Ricardo. I don't know why you're laughing. But you've got Moti, you've got Chase. I, I think survey the options. Let's see what else we have. You know, before I say what I really want to say, I don't want the Caribbean to get this wrong. It's not that I don't think Roston Chase is a good cricketer. I think Roston Chase is being pushed in the wrong format of the game. Um, and I will say no more on that. That's just how I feel about it. I don't think Roston Chase is a, a T20 cricketer. I'm not even sure he's a 50-over cricketer. Definitely not when you're going to bat him at number six. Um, I, I don't know, but there seems to be this massive push to have him play limited overs cricket when I think his best format is test cricket. And that now, unfortunately, as far as I'm concerned, seems a thing of, of the past. Um, but I'll leave that there. It's interesting that you speak about bowling the back-to-back -back overs, right, Nikhil? Because the captain, Rovman Powell, the reason he gave for why he didn't bowl a second over, he bowled one over for six runs, was a very good over, and he said part of why he didn't bowl again was because on these decks against this type of quality, you don't want to be bowling back-to-back -back overs. So there is a recognition on his part at least when it comes to his bowling, that this is something you don't necessarily want to be doing. Yeah, I must say, Ricardo, one thing about you, you're sharp. You always are listening, and nothing goes past you. But what else? I also heard that. Um, and I think he was sort of suggesting for his bowling that he didn't sort of believe that someone with a lot less pace than maybe Azari Joseph or Russell could bowl the back-to-back -back overs. But I wonder, and the second T20 International will be telling, but it's tough because... 
Aki Hossein has done the major success has come with that new ball when he gets the ball to drift into the left hander or away from the right hander, like we saw in that England series. So I completely understand why he's giving Hossein that new ball. And look, Hossein bowled an outstanding 15th over. It went for just seven runs. That could have easily gone the other way. So we have to give credit where it's true, but I completely understand what he's doing. However, I just thought with a left hander at the crease and David Warner, who is firing, it is a huge risk to have the ball spinning back into him on that ground. And that's why I felt the back-to-back -back overs was sort of risky. So that's why I'm just saying, Ricardo, Roston Chase spins the ball away from the left hander. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm figuring you would find a way. Um, quick last one. Um, how important was it for Brandon King and Johnson Charles to get some runs, especially when you consider that a lot of the firepower, the real firepower is in the middle. Um, but when you can start like that, and if you can consistently do that, it's good for the team going forward. Yeah, absolutely massive. I think for Brandon King, um, he is sort of the resident opener at one end, uh, and this is what we expect of him. We've seen glimpses. He's gotten starts in that England series, but this sort of dominance where he's so aggressive in the offside, but also when they bowl straight to him, he can score with that pull, which he's been enhancing and working on. But Johnson Charles, now, I think this is a really interesting situation because we've obviously had Kyle Mears as the incumbent opener. In the England series, Sammy brought in Charles for the last couple of games. He played then. He starts the series now. So, they at times have liked to have that left-right combination. Now they've got the two right-handers. Is Sammy sort of saying to us that this is the direction he wants to go with Charles? Or will we get to see Kyle Mears come back in for maybe a game or two to also make his case? It's interesting because Kyle Mears can also bowl uh, over or two with them in the power play with the new ball and get it to swing. So keep an eye on that, folks, at home. Whether sort of Johnson Charles is retained and plays these next two matches, it could be a clear indication that he will start at the World Cup. But he was fantastic. And again... These pitches will really suit him. He was dis he destroyed every bowling attack in the ILT20 uh, in Dubai a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, Nikhil, we have to leave it there. But I'll say this, Sherfin Rutherford has to watch his place as well because you, if you really want to bring back Cal Mears, he could open, Johnson Charles could drop down at three or the other way around. So a lot of options for Darren Sammy and the selectors. And so all these players have to be on the alert and ensure that they continue to perform or else you can easily be out of this team because as far as I'm concerned, it's a high-quality team. Nikhil, we'll be chatting again after the second T20 International, which will be on Sunday. No show on Sunday, but I'm sure we'll have a chat on Monday. Take care. All right, Ricardo, you rest up, man. Keep All being right. sharp. <laughs> Nikhil Utamchandani. Let's go to a break. We'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone.